My name is Dori Vasquez Nolan, and I'm the executive director of Care House, the Macomb County Child Advocacy Center. <coughs> Our main office is located in Mount Clemens. We also now have a satellite office located in the city of Warren. Care House is the only agency in Macomb County that provides a comprehensive uh, response uh, with intervention, advocacy, and treatment services for child victims of sexual abuse, physical abuse, children that may have been a witness to a violent act and they're not offending family members. Our goal is to minimize the trauma that is typically associated uh, not only with the acts of abuse but also with the investigative and prosecution phases. Care House is one of over 800 accredited children's advocacy centers or CACs as we call them in the United States. We collaborate with all law enforcement jurisdictions in Macomb County Children's Protective Services, the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office, um, medical and mental health professionals, as well as the FBI, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and Homeland Security. Those federal agencies usually are in cases of um, human trafficking, child pornography, things like that. We know that talking about child sexual abuse is uncomfortable and difficult. Unfortunately, that's a big part uh, of the problem. We can't wish away child sexual abuse or pretend that it doesn't exist. The reality is that one in 10 children will become victims of sexual abuse before they turn 18. Almost three kids in every Michigan classroom are living with the trauma of sexual abuse and that's um, over 20,000 of all the children in Macomb County. Sadly, we know that these statistics are probably underreported because most children never do tell. And sadly, living with child sexual abuse is a reality for children of every race, gender, and economic status. These children could be your children, your neighbor's children, your children's friends. Um, one of them may have even been you or me. Over 90% of child victims do know their abuser, and those that molest children look and act just like everyone else. Abusers can be neighbors, friends, clergy, teachers, parents, or other family members. They can be adults or children. They can be men or women. The children that come to care homes are, come from every community in Macomb County and were spared the trauma of multiple forensic interviews and provided with the support and tools that they need to heal. After a forensic interview, Care House offers follow-up support services to the child victim and their parents intervening to promote healing and helping families to cope with the emotional and uh, emotional stress and trauma caused not only by the acts of abuse but by the investigative process. These services include crisis counseling, child safety assessments, parent and child support groups, fam uh, trauma-focused therapy sessions, family advocacy, access to forensic medical examinations. Uh, we have a family pantry at both of our locations with cleaning supplies, PPEs, baby items, um, food, uh, school supplies, children's books. We offer holiday assistance for families that we uh, identify that are um, in need and struggling during the holidays. We offer referrals to other needed community resources and as the designated local council in Macomb County for the Michigan Children's Trust Fund, we offer child abuse prevention, education, and training to professionals and to the community at large. Families are never charged for any of the services that they receive at Care House, and we provide services to all of her children and families. We're very proud to report that according to our most recent independent financial audit, 88 cents of every dollar that comes to Care House is dedicated specifically towards our services for uh, families. Since our opening in 1996, we've conducted over 8,500 forensic interviews and 108 of those children were residents of the 
village of New Haven. In 2018, we conducted 753 forensic interviews and with 11 of those children being residents of New Haven. In 2019, 757 total forensic interviews with 11, again, children residing in New Haven. And last year, in 2020, we provided 664 forensic interviews with nine of those children residing in New Haven. Last year, we were grateful for the $1,303 uh, that we received from the Village of New Haven, which allowed us to support services for three of your families. 2020 has definitely been a challenging year for everyone and for Care House and the families that we serve. Our services were deemed to be essential by the state of Michigan, and our staff continued uh, to serve children and families even during stay-at-home orders. Unfortunately, we canceled two of our annual fundraising events, so our resources are being stretched thin. We've already seen a greater demand uh, for support and services from families that have been impacted by the pandemic, and we've also experienced an increase in unexpected expenses as we have implemented policies and practices to protect our staff and the families that we serve. We do depend on the community uh, to help us provide a voice for children and a safe place for them to be heard. We're so grateful for the long-standing support that we received from the Village of New Haven. We love coming here every year and seeing you guys. Uh, this year, we are respectfully requesting consideration for funding um, in the amount of $2,400, which would support services for four child victims and their families who reside in the Village of New Haven. Of course, we'd be grateful for any amount that you could give us. We have a website, www.mccarehouse.org, a Facebook page that we invite you to follow. And um, I thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.
gentlemen, the meeting will start at 7.02. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Gallinger? Here. Mr. Lukowski? Here. Mr. Guerrero? Here. Mr. Meissen? Here. Mr. Rapoli? Here. Trustee Polly? Here. President Pridemore? Here. Treasurer Stein? Here. Clerk Fritzett is here. And Attorney Kelly and Addison. Okay, approval of the agenda. I'd like to add one item. It would be L under present item. It will be information on the CARES Municipal Relief Funding. <laughs> and I gave all of you copies of the quote from Jason and SYR. I wasn't sure if you got it uh, earlier or not. The motion is in order. So no. Make a motion that we approve the agenda as amended. Support. Who has been supported? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we have the public hearing for the CDPP public service funding allocations. And I see it as an item under President's items. Have a comment on the agenda items? Any public comment? Right. Approval of the minutes of December 8th, 2020. I move that we approve the minutes for the council meeting on December 8th, 2020. Who is it supported? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, the consent agenda. Motion is order. Make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as uh, presented. Support. Is it moved and supported? Yes. Yes. Mr. Lombowski? Yes. Trustee Dollinger? Yes. Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Capoli? Yes. President Pridemore? Yes. Okay, on the President's items, I'd like to introduce not only our new treasurer, Amanda Stein, but also our new trustee, Mark Pauley. I think you're familiar, so you're familiar with Mark. And Amanda stepped up to the plate when we needed her, so. Uh, I think we'd all like to say hi and welcome. Hi, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, action on the public hearing, CDBG CDB public service funding allocation. Yeah, any thoughts? Do we have a motion? So Again, we have two thousand six hundred and fifty dollars to allocate. So I've never, you know, I'm not sure the protocols. You guys will correct me as I mess things up, but I'd like to make a motion that we award the entire allocation to Care House. Second. Been properly moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, I don't see council rules of procedure. Um, I gave all of the copies <clears throat> of the council rules of procedure. It has not been updated in over a decade. So I'd like, as one of our projects, is to go through it and see what needs to be amended or needs to be changed. Read it over. If you have any suggestions, write them down. I'd like to also schedule some workshops where we'll be talking about this in addition to the budget. 
and a few other, uh, a few other things. So we're going to schedule a couple of budget hearings as well. So um, you all have copies. Does anybody need? Did I speak anyone? Does anybody have copies? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I was going to ask about that if we wanted to do like a subcommittee or something like that, because there's a lot of little things in there that you know, like on the agenda, like formatting it how we actually do it as opposed to how it's in the uh, rules and procedures. So. Right. There, there's a few things. Um, my take on it is if everybody wants to read through it, put down their thoughts and ideas. I think a lot of us are going to probably be on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we're going to schedule a couple of workshops, and this will be the subject of one of them along with some other things. So uh, I think everybody should have a little input on it, and then we can take a look at what everybody wants. Okay, the Clark Street, 27 Mile, and there's an intersection of realignment. Did everyone get the uh, copy of the information from Senate? So we have to approve the budget and authorize the village engineer to prepare the plans and specifications. Again, I think he said this is the project for 2022. Um, so we're getting ahead of that. So I'm not sure if you want it. So are we going to approve the budget for the entire amount or just the, I think it's 80-20 uh, with, with, uh, with the grant? Um, yeah, we're going to approve the entire amount. And then if it changes, and I'm sure it will in the next year and a half, they'll come back to us with uh, with new figures if he needs to. Okay, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to approve funding for the 27 mile Gratiot uh, realignment project. The amount of two hundred fifty-seven thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Support. So what's that figure again? Two fifty-seven nine fifty. If we properly moved and supported. Roll call, please. Trustee Foley? Yes. Trustee Bellinger? Yes. Trustee Bukowski? Yes. Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Mason? Yes. Trustee Cowley? Yes. President Pryor? Yes. Okay, we got a quote from uh, DNJ about striping in the 27 Marble Branch area. Again, this project won't be done for another year and a half. But in the meantime, the striping at that intersection is yeah, almost non existent. So, um, what I'm looking for is if we want to approve DNJ to go ahead and strike that intersection and carry us over until um, the road gets improved. If we approve it tonight, when will the work be done? And that's a talk to Dr. Sermed. I think it would not be immediately. Um, probably in the spring. Uh, so it would serve us for probably a year and a couple of months. But in the meantime, I think there was another accident there today. Yeah. 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 So um, I think we should probably do the studying if you all agree. So. Sir Med is on Zoom if, you, uh, if we do want to ask him any questions. Yeah, go no, ahead. Ask him when he, if he has a date for the strike. Okay. Um, hey, Sir Med, we were uh, wondering do you know a date of when the uh, striping would? would possibly take place if we approve the DNJ? Nope. <coughs> hey, Sir Matt, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so if we approve the DNJ striping, uh, when, when do you think that they would be able to, to uh, start with that? Yeah, you said I'll find out right away. Okay, good, good. So, uh, do we have a motion? I'm going to make a motion to go ahead with the striping um, provided by D and J, uh, the 27 in Gratiot intersection. I don't have that dollar amount. Down. 3450 $3,450. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perhaps I have supported. Roll call. Trustee Bukowski? Yes. Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Kukoli? Yes. Trustee Meisen? Yes. Trustee Colley? Yes. Trustee Bellinger? Yes. President Pridemore? Yes. Okay, um, I asked uh, Lennox Township to give us a list of all of the village-owned properties. There's over two dozen. 
Uh, one of the properties is, of course, the 47 acres on Clark Street. The last time we had an appraisal done was, um, I believe, three years ago, closer to four. Um, I'd like your authorization to uh, hire someone to reappraise that property along with the uh, smaller lot on Haven Ridge that the village owns so that we will have the information available to us at the current market rate should anybody be interested in the property. Um, Trustee Bellinger gave me uh, the name of the real estate agent that deals specifically in vacant properties, assessing vacant properties. Um, do, we have, do we have any idea of, of the approximate, the ballpark figure, what they cost? So he's also a licensed appraiser, just for the record. He's not just doing, you know, fair market valuation. Um, ballpark for an appraisal of, of that scale is $500 or less, I would say, typically. Yeah. But it's that, and there's a one other smaller lot. So it's just not a lot of money, but I think, right now, I think we're going to need that information. So uh, I'd like approval to move forward with getting the property appraised. I think you probably should approve up to a thousand dollars because there are two parcels. Okay. Okay. We have a motion. I make a motion that we approve the uh, appraisal for the two parcels and then uh, up to one thousand dollars. Support. We moved and supported. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we have been discussing increasing the pay for the treasurer and uh, trustees Bellinger did a little homework. Yeah, so um, it was kind of interesting actually going through the different municipalities and um, I, I would say, and I have a couple different comparisons that were light and not by a small amount on what we pay our treasurer. Um, I, I went through about eight different municipalities. Um, I went smaller, I went bigger, and I went middle of the road. Most of the, for, by population, most of the municipalities that are similar in size to us employ a treasurer on a full-time basis. But that's in lieu of other positions that we have in place. Um, so I had to go with kind of some smaller municipalities. Um, and when I say we're low, I mean, like the village of Martin pays 477 per, per month plus 25 dollar meeting stipend, and they have 410 people in their municipality. Um, and they average 10 hours a week for that treasurer, but they don't have a full-time position, of course. Ubli, which is a little bit larger, um, about 1,000 people, and we're, we're at like 4,600 as of the 2010 census, so we've obviously increased since then. They do um, about $460 per month with five hours per week um, time, plus a stipend of $50 per meeting. Um, and then kind of the only outlier that is similar to what we do is Gibraltar, and they have a population of 4656. Um, they only do meetings, but the treasurer just appears and doesn't present, or doesn't actually put together any of the reporting. Um, so I guess my suggestion would be, because we're certainly not looking at a salary of DeWitt, for example, who has a full-time treasurer, pays $77,000 per year, um, and if it was a full-time position, we'd be, <laughs> we'd be having a different conversation. But my suggestion, at least for now, would, would be to raise it up to, to 450 which is really, on a per meeting basis, the lowest that I was able to kind of, on a per month basis, I guess is what I would say, the lowest I was able to justify for anything that was even close in population. Um, we're kind of, we're, we're actually really an outlier. There were only three municipalities that paid per meeting that I was able to find at all, let alone, so. Because currently the rate is 200, 200 for the month. For the month. No, well, no, it's for the month. Meeting. It's for the month. For month. So, but it's reported to MML as being for, for meeting. In the um, coordinates. I agree. Month. But but whoever reported our wages and salaries to MML when we were survey, surveyed this year reported it as a per meeting stipend. Okay. Yeah. But our ordinance says. Correct. Yes. Meeting. Yeah. So it would be just. My suggestion to go to 450, I think it's a little bit more in line with like the lower per meeting or per month. Sorry, now you have me confused. So is it 450 per month or? Per month. Okay. Yeah. So that would require the ordinance to be changed then to. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
But I figure uh, we'll discuss it. If you wish to move forward with that, we can certainly change the ordinance. So your thoughts? Well, I, I think that the, the treasurer position is, a, is more than every week. Is you're on deck every week. Not that we're not on deck all the time, but we're, we're physically required to be here really once a month. But that's weekly, yeah. several times a week. So I, I think that the 450 is fair. And of all the municipalities that I reached out to, and like I said, I think I have eight or nine here, all of them said that if it, they're just preparing like like exactly what this position is, it's about a five hour per week commitment. And that was pretty uniform across the board. It was like 10 on a really heavy month, maybe. But they all said they were pretty average five, five hours a week. Now, Sean, do you think we should um, wait for the areas until we approve the ordinance, or can we, approve, can we change the ordinance after approval? I think it's acceptable to approve the pay rate now because although you don't have the ordinance, I mean, what you're saying is you want the pay rate, so we want to change the ordinance commensurate. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no. I was going to say, and, and what we said a day where we that would become effective. I would think for clarity purposes, we want to do that. So you want, the motion would be to both increase the pay and, and, and amend the ordinance at the same time. And then we'll Decide whatever date you want that to happen. And I can set the ordinance at that time because it's, it'll, it'll be effective upon publication, so we got to make sure we get the, the date right so that we're far enough out. Yeah. Give ourselves time. Yeah. So, February 1st, since it's monthly, yeah. does that sound equitable? Yeah. Okay, motions in order? I make a motion to increase the charges to 450, mm -hmm. I mean, effective by February. 450 months. Yeah. Oh, month. Per month. month. Per month. Yeah. Okay. And we have to try and uh, change the ordinance. To change the ordinance on before the meeting on February. Support? Support. Okay, can I get a roll call? Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Bonagowski? Yes. Trustee Provoli? Yes. Trustee Bellinger? Yes. Trustee Colley? Yes. Yes, we didn't have a uh, section for uh, comment on the discussion. Oh. Discussion. Rewind. Rewind. Uh, I guess I guess I'm a, I'm a little my my yes was a little hesitant. I support the the motion, but don't we need to have I mean don't we need to have the ordinance in front of us? To, I mean, we're we're, we're approving the number. we're approving the change of the ordinance without a resolution. That we don't we don't have a resolution rep documented or anything. Do we need that? Well, I mean, we don't need a, a written resolution to do it. I mean, you vote for it, and then we can say that it's going to be effective at such and such time for it. But I, I, you know, it is kind of backwards. Is that, um, that's, that's what yeah. I just I want to make sure that procedurally we're following us. Yeah, we can't we can't just the point. Yeah, we yeah. can't really adopt the one. Yeah, we're, we're actually passing a motion. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's why I, I support I support where we're trying to go with this. I just want to make sure procedurally we're Then should we make the motion to have um, Sean revise the ordinance? Right. I, I, I believe the, the motion should be for well I guess are we are we rescind, we rescinded are we rescinding the motion? All right. I make a motion that we ask Sean to uh, amend the or give us a resolution which amends the ordinance for the treasurer's pay in the amount of 450 per meeting, per month, per month, per, <laughs> month, okay. per month, for us to review at the February council meeting. Support. All right, we move to support it. Any other comments? Roll call. Trustee Meissen? Yes. Trustee Bukowski? Yes. Trustee Bellinger? Yes. Trustee Colley? Yes. Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Okay, uh, let's draw my attention that the Parks and Recreation Committee does not receive a stipend, as our planning commission does. I think we missed committee appointments. Uh, oh, yeah, we did, because I wrote right over it. Um, 
we do have vacancies on a couple of things. Um, what I would like to do is, again, uh, schedule a workshop um, to, as a matter of fact, uh, we have two committees that we need appointments to, and I'd like volunteers. Uh, we only have one person to work on our Ways and Means Committee, and I would like Ways and Means to work with our uh, accountant to help with the budget presentation this year. Um, Trustee Bronkowski had recommended last year that we get graphs, uh, charts, pie charts, which makes it easier to understand than having multiple little tiny lines on a sheet. Um, so we do need two people to sit on ways and means. Um, do we have any interest in parties? <laughs> Does anybody else want to be grabbed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would. I would. Uh, I would yeah, I'm here to talk about these. Oh, okay. Do we have another uh, person joining? We have two on. Um, we have Mario. Mario. We have two bodies. We just got one. So Mario, are you saying on uh, ways and means? Yes. Okay. So then that that's what you guys said, right? Mark and Mario. We need three. Oh, you need three. You need a one. Okay. You volunteers. Almost here, and I see it too already. That means monthly. Yeah. Okay. 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 So 
and there's uh, uh, something I have to talk to the attorneys about the CPA too. So there'll be some information coming down with that that way too. So, but I think we're good for now. Now, back to the Parks and Rec Committee meeting. Um, the Parks and Rec Committee does not receive a stipend like our planning uh, commission. And um, I was wondering if anyone, uh, uh, what your thoughts are on actually paying this back and for meeting our parts of the is incredible. They did the Jingle Bell roll, which you have, you have so many people enjoyed. Even in uh, these very troubling times, they stepped up to the plate and still had community activity safely. So uh, I was wondering about your thoughts on actually giving them a stipend per meeting. Yeah, I, I would definitely support it. Um, you know, I, I, I was actually really shocked when I heard that Parks and Rec wasn't getting a stipend. Mm -hmm. um, out of all the committees, no offense to any of the others, uh, but I think Parks and Rec, I mean, they have the monthly meeting that they're doing, and they're the ones that are actually the face of the village putting together the events. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that, you know, for the most part, maybe not, not, maybe not everybody on the list, but there's a lot of folks that have to come out and actually set up and volunteer their time to actually run the events and everything like that. So um, I was shocked when I heard that they, that they weren't. I always just assumed they, they did have a Um I would like to propose that maybe it's, it's a two-fold or a two-part stipend, where it's one for the meeting, but then also some sort of mechanism for paying for the actual, vol well, volunteering, but for the actual work at the, uh, at the events. I don't know exactly how the best mechanism would be of tracking who's actually coming and working at the events, but, you know, I, I think something that I definitely learned through the 150th anniversary uh, committee that we had is getting people to come to a meeting is one thing, getting somebody to come out and actually work the event is a totally different subject. A lot of people were willing to come to the meeting and they'd sit here and they'd listen to what everything was going on. And then when we got to like a month before the actual event, then it was our five people that were showing up and that's it. And then that's all of us that were running the event. So, you know, at least if there was some sort of monetary budget or, you know, something that we could pay per event for people that are working, I don't know the mechanism. I don't know how that would work out. Uh, but I think it's something that at least should be considered. Yeah, I think we can consider that later down the road. Uh, right now we have a little breathing period because we got a lot going on right now. Right, right. But yeah, I was like you. I was surprised when I found out they were not getting the stipend. So, um, and our, our planning commission gets fifty. Fifty. Planning says sixty for me. Sixty. Sixty. That's what the, um, so we've been yeah. saving $10 a month with her. <laughs> 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 Good for her. Okay, um, so ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, have any other comments on this, motions in order. So I will make a motion that uh, to give the Park and Rec Committee members a $60 stipend for per meeting each month. And we'll leave it at that, and then maybe we can come back at a later date with some other ideas, Brian. Sure. Sure. Yeah, maybe between now and then we can look at uh, what others communities are doing. Quick question, because in the ordinance it says shall serve without pay, so don't we need to modify the ordinance? Yes, we do. So then I'm going to yeah. amend my right. motion to say that. Um, do we have support to move forward to amend the ordinance and to increase the pay? We're asking the, the motion then is to ask uh, Sean to draft to amend the, to come to us with a resolution to amend the ordinance. I'm gonna pause for a moment. Now, what about ZBA? Do they get paid? They're yeah, we're at fifty. Okay. So I'll well, see this says eighty seven fifty I mean. Um, Again, we're saving money. So I, I don't think my guess would be we probably just haven't been being paid what the ordinance says because, I mean, I, I know after like taxes, it's like 46 something the last time we met. <coughs> and again, it's worth Which is, I mean, it's, what? Yeah. Yeah. We've got so many ordinances that are out of sync, outdated, not, yeah. So that's going to be um, part of the workshop as well. We are all familiar with ordinances that we run across that are like, wait a minute. So that's going to be part of our, uh, part of our uh, 
workshops. So the motion is to ask Sean to change that ordinance to mm -hmm. bring us sixty dollars stipend and bring that back to us to vote on. Okay. And then we'll go into motion once we approve it. So he has to give a resolution. Yeah, he's got to get all that going, and then. Do you have a support for? Support. Okay. And with the support, and all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Okay, we actually come up to workshop and budget meetings. Again, this is going to be all of us letting us each other know what our schedules are. I'd like to have at least two budget hearings before we approve the budget. If we need three, definitely we can go to three. And I would like to also schedule two workshops. If our schedules allow. I know some of us are back to work or working from home and our schedules are kind of compacted. But if you can think of any issues that you've faced or found that could be addressed at the workshops, to kind of bring everything online the way it should be, uh, we have, and I had a conversation with someone just this week about uh, ordinances that are out of date or not in compliance with other state or federal law. So uh, we were talking about the um, uh, zoning ordinances, about going through, and, and we got a quote from the county to amend some of the, the base, the bottom line financial, the, the least it would cost to update all of our planning ordinances twenty thousand dollars he said it could go up to a hundred thousand so i think we can look at them and you know again that's part of what we need to look at but the the planning ordinances that was just that was just last year that planning went through and was the, the well there was all it was all the zoning ordinances wasn't it there was some concern about a couple of the current the ordinances that are still on the books but are they are they the current ones or are they the ones that are showing up in eco again what we have to do is that's part of the workshop yeah is to go through the ordinances that we have on the books to make sure they're in compliance with state and federal law yeah and the, the way uh the, mr Paul casey was talking about up at the county he said we got a couple that are not in compliance so, but I think that's just something certainly we can review and, you know, talk to the, 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 the wonder child here and, and try to get everything straight out without spending $20,000. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'd like to get that, keep this in mind, budget workshops and uh, just regular workshops. Okay, and everybody let me know if you have a day during the week where it's convenient or a time during the week that's convenient and we'll get some on the schedule. So, do you want to do this in the evening, correct? Yeah, if every because I think a lot of people are yeah, okay. so but yeah, just uh, and just shoot an email, let me know when you're available and we'll try and get stuff okay. scheduled. Okay, educational and training resource center furniture is the end. Mics, um, 
so if we have presentations or whatever, uh, we would actually be able to, to post your Zoom meetings up there. Um, you know, we have Brian, we can see faces and whatnot. Um, over in the fire department, there'll be um, um, really the, the, the nuts and bolts of everything is uh, a bunch of different monitors, speakers, uh, which allow firemen and, and the village itself to be able to host Zoom meetings on a large 86 inch, uh, what they call a uh, smart board. Uh, smart board basically is just a giant computer, moves things, touch things, sees things. Uh, there'll be a camera mounted on it, there'll be speakers, there'll be uh, uh, individual mics in the room. Uh, so if you're sitting at the table, everybody will be able to hear you. Um, and it basically allows us to to only be able to set you know six foot apart firemen in that uh, in our training room, in the apparatus bay, and in the uh, which was the the conference room. Um, this is a grant. We have gotten a nod to go ahead and forward. Um, so with your approval of that of those two things, we'll get that stuff on order. Uh, again, there's no timeline when this stuff's going to get delivered. You know, everybody's after all this AV equipment, so. Again, I'm hoping to get this done sooner rather than later. And you asked uh, Michael Curtis and Homeland Security if these funds could be used for anything else. Correct. So basically, it was anything to do to, to prevent the spread of, of, of COVID. I asked, you know, left, hey, can I go buy a fire truck? He said no, because uh, it has to be specifically um, any type of thing to prevent uh, the spread of COVID. Uh, he said a majority of the, the other municipalities in the area, that's all they're doing is buying AV equipment. Uh, you know, laptops, computers, stuff that will allow people to do things remotely. And going forward, uh, this training center could be used by DTW if they need to get certification. If any clerical want to go online, uh, it's going to be multifunctional. And the uh, furniture, the fire department said they can get them some money towards it because they're going to be using it as well. Uh, was it, I think, a thousand? Correct. A thousand. So we're looking for approval to get the furniture for the new training center. And this is not covered by a grant. So the six the uh, six thousand five hundred and eight dollars and twenty cents is not covered by a grant. So this would be us setting up a training center in the building. I've got five thousand two hundred and ninety nine. Oh, I've got another one. I'm looking at this. Well, they, they give us a, um, a discount of $563. That is good. Uh, 30 days from this quote, which I believe is the 20, the 16th. So January 16th, this quote is good. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't get that figure. Okay, so what's the new figure? Uh, $5,299. Okay. And you're kicking in a thousand, right? Correct. Okay. So our portion would be 4299 Correct. Any questions? So would the motion be for forty-two ninety-nine or fifty-two? It would be fifty-two, and then we'll just divide it from that. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the purchase of the furniture in the amount of five thousand two hundred ninety-nine dollars even. Second. And probably means it's supported. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. So the quote you have in front of you is SYO. SYO is our IT department through the village. Um, it is pretty uh, detailed in, in where everything is and what everything is. Um, both uh, Mike Curtis with the county and, and Jason know that this will more than likely change as installation you know, starts. Uh, they are both aware of that. The, it doesn't matter if we spend you know, $70,000, they're only giving us the $60,000. Um, and whatever we spend up and over that will be the village's responsibility. Okay. But we're pretty much sticking to what we're giving. Yeah, we're, we're going to be pretty close. Yeah, I think it's, what are we at, 50, 59.8? Um, yeah. And normally in a case like this, we do try and get three quotes. But because of the problem with the email addresses, they, it was a last minute. When they were finally, it was a last ditch effort to get a hold of us. I got a hold of you contacted me and he said hey are you guys interested in this money or not we go, yes yes we want the money so we called up jason he did us a favor and he ran up a quote real quick so that we could apply for but normally we do try to get um, multiple bids and this is going to be 
Uh, is this from Homeland Security? Where's the money? This is from the state. <coughs> this is this is federal money that's coming from from the state. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is this is the federal money that's coming from the state. Okay. So this entire amount is covered by a grant. Correct. Yes. We just need approval um, by the end of this month uh, to give back to them, or it's no way. So the motion would be to accept the money. To the, the, the motion would be today is to to accept the quote from SYO, um, so that we can get that on the books that shows that we are um, going to go forward with the, the equipment. So okay, do we need any kind of uh, official vote for Michael Curtis? Well, Michael, this is that, this, that is would be what he. This is what the the the, uh, the approval tonight or the approval tonight is okay. what I will give Mark for this year. Okay. And this is and it will be after all everything's done, uh, so we don't submit anything. We just have to have it says that we're doing it by the end of this month, and then he knows that it's probably going to take you know two months, sixty, ninety, whatever, however long it takes for us to complete it. Then we give him that uh, RPO. And then we give them the receipt for all the oil. So I'll approve the purchase of uh, AV equipment from SYO in the amount of fifty-nine thousand eight hundred thirty-eight dollars and thirty-three cents. Support. I have a question. I just want to make sure we are not going to exceed that limit, correct? I can I'll amend it to say not to exceed sixty thousand. Uh, just sixty thousand nine. Six hundred thirty-one. Whatever that grant dollar amount is, I guess would be my. Yeah, the $60,921. I don't know what it is. I just don't want to commit uh, the village past that when we're flying. I mean, I can't, you know, things happen and he gets upstairs and says, oh, we need a junction box. Right, and I get that, but I also think, and, and please disagree with me if you think that, if he had to kind of roll this together, it's more than likely a little heavy. I don't know. Right. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. No, we should definitely lock down with the amount of the grant. Any overages have to go back to the Absolutely. Yeah. Any overages of the $60,900, it would like to be a motion that we would definitely have to come back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, that satisfies. Thank you. So his quote says that he needs 48000 no, he said it requires a deposit of forty nine thousand eighty eight dollars and thirty three cents prior to beginning the project. So, is this motion just to say that we're moving forward? Because if we go back to this guy and enact the project, he's going to want forty eight thousand dollars. And if we don't have the grant money, that's going to need to be fronted by the village and pay back. Well, that's what we do. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do, yeah. In, in case anybody wasn't clear on that, and the trustees, we just start the case on the front end, we do the first. So, so we'd be authorizing Chief to make a, to make that deposit on this motion to move it forward. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just to make sure. So that's, but we do want to change. We do want to mention the full amount of the grant, $60,691. So, okay, so Tracy, you're going to move to the Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll amend it to, to not to exceed the amount of the grant. Okay. Not to exceed $60,691? Correct. Okay. Support for the motion? Support. Good move this supported. Roll call, please. Trustee Capoli. Yes. Trustee Mysa. Yes. Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Bonkowski? Yes. Trustee Gollander? Yes. Trustee Pridemore? Yes. Trustee Powers? Yes. There are no items. Approval of the payment of bills. Make a motion that we approve the payment of the bills in the amount of one hundred seventy-three thousand four hundred twelve dollars and sixty-one cents. Support. Any questions? Roll call. Trustee Mason. Yes. Trustee Bankowski. Yes. Trustee Bellator. Yes. Trustee Guerrero. Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Trustee Cowley? Yes. President Pridemore? Yes. And we have Ms. Dines versus Treasury. I have the Toro Village Assets. 
in the amount of five million twenty-five thousand nine hundred sixty-six dollars fifty-eight cents. I'll move to receive and file the further report of the amendment. Support. Mr. Gordon. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda items for the February 9th meeting are due by January 29th. And under unfinished business, we have municipal building security from Dyke Security. We contacted three companies and only that security responded. We had them come to the building and do a tour, a tour of the building, and uh, that security was the only one that responded. Does everyone have a copy of their quote in the amount of $3,999.14? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any other questions? Tell us about some of the challenges we've been facing with the security system. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we did find about the keyboard is obsolete. Nobody knows how to fix it, nobody knows how to take care of it, and the company that built it is no longer whatever. Um, some of the things that's happening is going off at night. Marcus is getting really mad at us because he gets called at 502 when we leave. And it's not setting. Um, he's getting calls at midnight or 1205 saying that it's a late, it hasn't been set or something like that. It's been set. Um, we've had motion problems. We have all sorts, been having all sorts of problems with, with this thing. Also too, since uh, Phoenix Contracting or Medina Town Center, what do you want to call it? We did have uh, somebody that could, could come out and program, program it for us. I haven't had anybody come out and program it in two years, so I cannot get IDs and give numbers to people. So this, there was a challenge when I had new people come in with Rachel and Amanda and um, and I had to get my code to get in the building and out, So because I had no way to add or delete any numbers out of the system. So what this company is going to do is come through and, and um, change out all our keypads and they will be able to come down and I can just send them an email and say, okay, I need this, this, and this. We'll take care of it and off we go. So. That was, that's the plan, at least we can get some codes and everybody have their own codes and they get in and out of the building. So that's, that was the goal with us getting back security and getting the quotes. Any questions? I can't find that out too quick. Does that, does that, is that for the entire building to include the third corner inside as well? Mm -hmm. I'm just changing out the key bags right now. I thought they were gonna work on day, what's the five? Yes, day five also. Is the quote sent out? It's part of the back end or yes. Yes. It is. It, it says office, office panel. Yeah. 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 You can leave an office panel replacement. Yeah. Also, too, we're oh, thank you. Excuse me. Also, too, we're going to pursue them doing our monitoring to the Guardian also. Okay, so, I was going to ask about that. Are you yeah. going to do that? So yeah, Guardian is like 1,071. I think you come in under that, but I don't. $45 a month. There we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to pursue that also. So. I have a point that says any equipment found to be defective will be placed under a change order at the end of the job. Um, well, just like anything around here, just like the, the we right. don't know what they're going to find in the wall, so. Right. And anything they find won't really have an impact on the functionality of what's going on. Well, I told everybody to walk through the building. We don't want any cat like plans. What we want to do is to replace and repair what we have. So anything passed with this additional approval, we'll come back with our council. Yeah. But we're not upgrading, we're not, because right now this isn't our building, but it's causing a problem for access. So. Right. No, it has to be fixed. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. It's just that change order really makes me nervous. Um, no, everything would come back with our council. And then just purely out of curiosity, would the village own this equipment then? I'm sorry. Would the village own this equipment? So if we ever decided to move, would we be able to take that with us? We pay for it. Okay. I'll get the screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Motion to move. 
Make a motion that we approve the uh, quote for the um, um, Dyke Security in the amount of three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and forty-eight cents. Support. Good to move and support it. Roll call, please. Trustee Mankowski? Yes. Trustee Bellinger? Yes. Trustee Leroy? Yes. Trustee Cowley? Yes. President Cryer? Yes. And we have the DS file proposal we've talked about this previously about changing our domain name to something less costly and a little simpler. Um, I think you've all gotten emails from Jason that if we stick with that, that uh, only does it cost us $4,000 as opposed to $350 for a 10 year period. But we don't have the ability to say, we want newhavenmi.gov. The agency that controls it gives you the name. So, um, so many communities around us, the, the, the Macomb County, the Macomb gov.org. They didn't fall for the .gov either. Washington Township is .org. Chesterfield is .org. A lot of communities don't want to pay $4,000 over a 10-year period when they became, for example, $350 for a 10-year period. I think uh, a shining example of how long these emails are is we almost lost $60,000 in grant money because the website is .org our email to .gov, and he didn't notice the spelling error in the middle because it's this long. So I, my feeling is I would like us to go something a little more simple and a little more cost effective. So any questions or thoughts? I've said it before, uh, I'll say it again. I'm, I'm fully in support of the New Haven MI, uh, but I really do, do think that it has to be .gov just because it makes it more official, it makes it, you actually have them, you know, the, when you send an email under a .gov email address, you're gonna get a response. If you get a, send an email under a .org, then anybody could, could so register. So that's worth 4,000 years, or 4,000 To me, it's worth the 4,000, but that's just me. Yeah. It's over a 10-year period. Yeah, it's over a 10-year period. <clears throat> As opposed to $350 over a 10-year period. To me, to me, over a 10-year period, $400 a year isn't that bad. Okay, but we can't get New Haven MI We can. I, I went out there. It's available. It's available. Then I'm giving it to us because Jason asked. Yeah. They assign the name. They didn't want to give us the name. They wanted. They, they gave us Village of New Haven hyphen MI dot go. I didn't see that in the email, but I mean, I, I I'll take your word for it. Yeah, he sent out an email that they they assigned us. It wasn't available according to the .gov people, so. Yeah. I mean, I guess personally, I'd, I'd like to see us stick with that .gov, but maybe we could see what kind of email address they're willing to give us. Uh, but that's just me, I'm only one seven. Any other questions? I'm trying to find that correspondence from Jason that said it. Yeah, that was, that was the December. second or third one that he said. I think it was the summer nine. Yeah. So I just and I also, I also talked to him in a subsequent phone conversation and asked him, you know, you know, can we get a small one back up? And he told me, well, they assign the names. They, you don't get to pick and choose. And he said that wasn't available. Because when you go to, when you, if you do like a Google search for just dot gov domain, it takes you to the dot gov, dot gov uh, US website. They have a link that says get a .gov domain, and then uh, they say, uh, okay, check to see if your domain you want is available, which then takes you to um, the search. And I mean, I, I type in newhavenmi.gov, and it says, yeah, it's available. And I wouldn't give you the option to check if yours is available, so we'll give it to you. <clears throat> I mean, I would, I would, I'm assuming, but I would assume that if we yeah. come and we say this is what we want, and you're saying it's available, that we could get it. Jason does <laughs> say in this email that they've already assigned us the New Haven slash hyphen Michigan dot gov, and that they will not change your domain name once it's been assigned. No. It is 
it is on the email. It says, because our emails are already at .gov, so that could the domain name that they're willing to give us if we register. So they're saying that they wouldn't be willing to change it? From what we already have been assigned. And I, I actually agree with Brian, I would like to stick with that gov, but not if that means that domain name. I, it, yeah, I don't like that either. It's too confusing for everybody. It's exhausting. It is exhausting. And the other thing that, I don't know if it's even part of this, or we're like maybe having a conversation with Jason, is the storage. Like, is yeah. it's n not good. I don't want to delete some of the things I have to delete to clear up space. I want a record of everything we do every month, and instead I'm like archiving and shuffling because I'm at max capacity. I'm halfway through a term. Yeah. If I stay like on any longer, then I'm going to be dumping. That's a conversation we did. Yeah. yeah. Every month I have to move all the emails off. Yeah, but that's a step that we shouldn't have to be doing, yeah. and then I'm sending it to a less secure platform. Yeah, no, definitely. And taking it on myself if something gets breached. I mean, I could. I just don't think that it's. I think we're a, a government entity, and it's probably worth having extra storage space in our secure. Um, yeah, there's a couple of different things. Like uh, the remote access license, and we've only got two. Mm. And especially during this past year, you know, I, I kept wondering why I kept getting booted up because somebody else signed in. I thought it was hacked. <laughs> Uh, so there's a couple of different issues that we need to talk to Jason about. We're certainly reminding me of this. And, you know, we need to address that. We definitely need to address that. So do we want to pause and, and talk to Jason a little bit more about that? Or well, that's maybe, a separate subject. I know, but maybe we need to seek maybe another opinion as well about this. Well, from a .gov perspective, if he's saying .gov has already assigned us, something and they won't want you to assign because we are assigned that that's our current like it's village of new haven hyphen mi.gov so if their website specifically states what you've been assigned they're not going to reassign that's what we're stuck with mm -hmm. so then we have to make the decision do we go to dot com dot org and if we're going to dot org are we satisfied with new haven mi dot or, or do we search out something we think is better? Yeah, just, like, the, the open samples I have is like Chesterfield Township. It's Chesterfield, Cheats of the Township, mi.org. Watch it. Macomb County is macombgo.org. They went to org. Washington Township is Washington Township, mi.org. So that was the example that we kind of found, you know, when we read, you know, in other townships, so, so, New Haven, mi.org. Or it would be easier for us to give out to the residents if they want to reach us. And, yeah, and it has to have Michigan or MI somewhere in it or else we're. It does have. Everybody in Connecticut is blowing us off. They're in Connecticut. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he ran a couple of names that, that, that he came up with was V N H. That's way too short. Right. You know, we have to identify ourselves as Union in Michigan. So, um, but yeah, the .gov thing, unless you guys want to keep it, we're going to have to go with something else. And a lot of communities, like I said, around us, including the county, figured out $4,000 for 10 years is kind of expensive. I mean, it's definitely more expensive than 350 If we could get our preferred .gov address, I wouldn't be worried about the $4,000 for yeah, 10 years. We can get it. But if we're looking at Village of New Haven mi.gov forever and ever, I think it's too long. I don't know if it helps or not, but and I try to be, I mean, I guess it's a good time to say I'm gonna be very, very conscious about my government role, my federal role with what I'm doing here. So, but I would say uh, it's public knowledge um, that the military did away with the dashes about eight years ago across the entire Department of Defense, precisely because of the problem with emails getting mixed up with the dash in it. So that was, you know, it was a substantial painful movement to change 1.6 million email addresses. So. Wow. Yeah, the dash is, when you try, when you say dash to a resident, they kind of give you the deer in the headlight. Like, what? Well, there's four different dashes. There's like a backslash, and forward slash, and hyphen. Yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing. I, so. I, I, hate to, I hate to delay this longer, because I know we want to just make the decision and go. Um, could, could we, by chance, 
table this for one more month so we can verify with that, the .gov registrar that they really won't let us change. I just I can't imagine that once you have been assigned a .gov that you are stuck with it for the rest of your life. Yeah, I mean, email video are now going anywhere. If you want to delay it, once you take work for one more month, you, one more month. you can get a hold of them. Yeah. You let us know what you found out. I already sent them the email. If they come back and they say it, then I 100% support the, the dollar. Okay, okay, look at it. But if everybody can hold on to the quote, they can get some things. Okay, new business budget amendments in the era. I try to do quarterly budget amendments. And usually at this time of year, what I had said in my note that I usually do the real taxes and the payroll benefits at this time because of the fact that the um, EPW, I never know when they're gonna be, when, but put their um, schedules are gonna be during the year. So I try to project where they're gonna spend, where their salaries are gonna be hitting it. So most of this stuff is basically salary-based that I had to do some um, budget amendments on. But also, too, in the same token, I, you could see from the water and sewer connections and stuff like that, we had a huge, huge um, increase in revenue from the building department that, in fact, reflects back into the sewer and the water department because of the sewer and water connections and stuff like that. So I had gone through that. And with this, with this growth, I'm collecting more sewer debt than we ever had. So if we keep on going on this progression, I, I figured out we'd probably need about $868,000 by the end of the quarter. So a lot of money so hopefully next year we can get a the uh, sewer deficit elimination plan and get that taken care of i also had to um populate it with the, our um, former vice drivers the twenty one thousand dollars that we got i didn't i to put that in there so i can get that in there um also the hazard pay for the uh, fire department the eighteen thousand dollars was put in as revenue in the fire department to offset the expense in the fire department for the hazard pay um else that I have that was opening. I don't want to even bring this but grave openings there's a lot of been an increase on that. Um, what else has been going on? With us, if you would look at the rest of the thing, you can see there's the minuses down there at the bottom on the last part there. We did have some where I'm taking the revenue away. Uh, with us doing the taking away the penalty charge and stuff like that, it did affect the bottom line. So I had said what I said, twenty-four thousand dollars it did, but in the same token, to an expense side, we didn't have to pay overtime for shutoffs and stuff like that. So we saved another six grand in that. Um, what else? On the expense side, trash collection is up, but also is our usage too. So we we're supposed to um, reconcile with DFL to how many household units we have that like that. Our bill went up from 16 to 19, 215, so it'll probably by the end of the quarter it's going to be up to 20 grand. Um, health insurance, I basically had to switch them around. When the first pay of the month comes through on the, on, um, on the DPW, it follows that first pay. So I have no control over where the, where the benefits are going and what line it's going to get. So I have to go back through and adjust stuff out and put it where it needs to be. Um, what else is going on? Nothing real out of the ordinary. We did, with current real taxes on the revenue side, I'm jumping around, I'm sorry guys, but um, we did almost $92,000 um, more this year to general fund on taxes. I think the fire department ended up with almost $30,000. So we're seeing the increases in the building and stuff like that, projected stuff around here. Unfortunately, I cannot, it's hard to, I can't even average trying to figure out what the heck we're going to have and stuff like that because uh, I think we was like 66% on the building side that we that everything was increased from um, our permits and stuff like that from this building search. I mean, how do you, I don't know how to plan for that, you know. So that's, that's been a dilemma for me doing stuff. Um, what else? Did anybody have any questions or anything that they needed help with? Um, Anything that pops out that. So I, I guess I would jump in. So I spent 
since the day I got it, I spent some time going through it, and, and it takes a while to reconcile. Um, you know, there's a lot behind this. You mm -hmm. preach to the choir here, I'm quite sure. You know, there's there's a lot that goes behind this. I just, I think my questions are open-ended. I, I think I just need time to kind of, just for my own, I see numbers, I don't know all day, right? So, uh, to some same degree. So, I just, I would have, you know, there's some, significant changes. It's a half a million dollars, you know, in one end and you know, it was, uh, just out of a half a million you know, yeah, uh, yeah, half a million dollars in in ads and hundred and fifty one in expense increases, which doesn't is probably not that much overall in the thing that I'm doing. But so I think I would table my questions more for spending some time, you know, being on the committee and just learning a little bit more about how stuff's broken down. This can't be easy to do, but um, so I would just offer that I'm looking, you know, I would like to sit down when we both find time, which I'm sure will be difficult to do, but just to kind of sit down and go through some of these lines. I'm not understanding the offsets of, you know, of, of pensions and health insurances versus increases and decreases, that kind of stuff, but uh, nothing major jumps out of me that I'm like, oh my goodness, what's that? I mean, the good news is $92,000 more, right, exactly. is, what, is, is exactly. what the adjusted ratio yeah. is. So well, all those new houses are paying off, I think, is what we're, yeah. is what we're saying. And we're starting to finally see that that's a, that's a big deal, right? Well, so, yeah. Mark, one of our instances is that um, March border for you for um, for when they do the assessing and stuff like that, we have to have our budget in before that. So we don't have all these numbers to be able to populate. So what we try to do is take last year's numbers for the tax portion of it anyways, and have that as a budget, as a key. And we were very conservative. And then we have to, like right now, this is when I have to up it, stuff like that. We get our delinquent taxes from this, from um, Macomb County at the end of December. So that's when I go and populate the line items and, and update them, get them to, to what they were supposed to be. So everything, most municipalities, they're, their fiscal year end is June, ours is March. So we don't never have all these numbers. I have to have the stuff in before March. So, so this is more of a, of a, I mean, it's a, it's an amendment, but it's kind of a reconciliation at the same time, yes. right? Yes, yes. So it's, it's yes. really more of a reconciliation yes. of actuals versus projections. Exactly. That helps a lot. Yes. Okay. I mean, if you think about it, it's been a year and a half since I got this, I had to do this budget, so yeah. Right, okay. So um, do I don't have any detailed questions. Okay. No. Well, they've so, uh, we need to schedule a couple of budget meetings. Oh, yeah. That's because right. with all these, this radical shift in numbers, yeah. I think we need a clear understanding of where we stand. Sure. Um, so that we can pass uh, a budget that's going to work for the new fiscal year. And uh, I, I did attend, uh, I, I went into a webinar with uh, the Michigan Department of Treasury. They were talking about the impact of COVID. Uh, revenues and there's the constitutional revenues and then there's uh, revenue sharing. The constitutional revenues were guaranteed. But the impact's going to be on the other half. And they're anticipating, th the figures that they had were from last June, before this stuff really went into gear, already was trickling down to 18 to 22% loss. So, you know, we have to be mindful going forward for at least the next two fiscal years on budgeting. That it's going to impact us Well, remember before we were losing because we didn't have our budgets in place and stuff like that. CBTRS, CBTRS, CBTRS. Right. Remember that? We kept that we still don't know what it means, but with CBTRS, <laughs> we're losing that. Again. Cities, villages, townships are revenue sharing. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, they're changing it again, I think. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so, so I am asking to increase revenue by $459,066.21, and I'm also asking to increase expenses to $151,656.25. So we have those figures at less than work speed. Oh, they're on our It's a no there, but for the camera. Here, I can, I can, I'll, I'll make the motion. I make the motion that we increase our revenue amendment. Uh, or revenue adjustment by $459,066.21 and to amend our expenses by an increase of $151,656.25. Support. It's been properly supported. Any questions? 
I do have one question, not necessarily to the budget, but you actually brought up a good point. Um, when you said that our fiscal year is March and everybody else is in this June, why? I don't know. Is that something that we could, I mean? <laughs> oh, no, 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 well, I'm, I'm just thinking ahead. If it makes if it makes your if it makes your job easier next year. Never mind. You can do a motion on the table who would support? I support it. Yes. Trustee Bellander? Yes. Trustee Bonkowski? Yes. Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Cowley? Yes. Trustee Bergoli? Yes. Trustee Yes. Okay, I'm done updates, Mr. Bergoli. Okay, so this is pertaining to getting a left turn uh, signal on 26 Mile and Main Street. Um, this is a topic that started back in 2016 when I first got on council. And the process was moving along, but was um, they took a back seat to the left turn signal that they put on uh, Main Street and Gratiot. After they did that, they were going to do traffic studies to determine, you know, um, they call it left turn phasing, but deter uh, determine whether or not to do that or not. That summer, they started doing that. They ordered it in January of 2020. Then COVID hit. Then they had that construction project and those manipulated traffic patterns, so they stopped doing the test because they weren't going to be realistic tests. So they didn't do any of them at all last year. I contacted them two weeks ago and they're going to uh, attempt to do that again this summer to do the traffic studies to... Um, so that's 26 New Haven Road? 26 Mile and New Haven Road, yeah. <laughs> so the, the tests that they do take six to nine weeks um, and they they have to go through a series of things before they actually put it in. One of them will be timing the lights too. So if they uh, monitor the traffic patterns and it comes out that they want to adjust the lights, they're going to do that first, do another study, and then you know if they determine at that point that there's, it's warranting to put a left turn signal on, then they'll do it. Great, thank you. Do they do any studies on accidents as part of that? Yes. You know? I can help. Very common accident problem. I think you have Captain Maselli in the, in the crowd. He never makes it to the office or to the fire department because of the accidents there. He's on his way and has to stop on scene. It's constant. Right. So we all know that. We see it. But it's like so double bottom trucks. They yeah, just we've had some horrific accidents there. Yeah. <coughs> People try to make the light, but the light they're making is red. Mm -hmm. So it's. Well, then the angle of the intersection to make that left, you're actually crossing a lot of the road before you actually get on the 26. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And the traffic studies have you done this summer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll stay on top of them. So drive around that corner a lot. So drive that corner a lot. I do it. Just in service. Right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the traffic lights. All the time. 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 Yeah. Well, I have Chief Dispatch Engine 1 who just sat there and hang out and wait for somebody to hit it. Make it the summer slow roll. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would not be fun. Okay, any other updates from that? Okay. So we've got calls from the floor. Uh, just to give everybody an update, just before Christmas, um, the company came in and uh, upfitted the entire uh, fire department with their new LED lights. <coughs> so everything is good, and uh, we appreciate it. So thank you. Yes, I'm Lewis. Lewis and Kate, a resident of New Haven, <coughs> and my question. Why are the pictures removed from the wall for the past president? The pictures that were on the wall for the past president, why are they removed? It's public comment on the agenda. I can talk to you after the meeting. Pardon me? I'll talk to you after the meeting. It's a public comment. After the meeting? Why can't I hear it? Tend to be. 
Because it's a public comment, make comments. And was it approved by council? Did council approve that removal of the pictures? After the meeting? Thank you. Tara Walsh for Parks and Recs. I'm the chair. I just want to say thank you so much for reviewing the ordinance and looking into a stipend for our team because we love what we do and that's just going to give us a little bit more oomph and push to do better. <laughs> so thank you. But also please consider, um, think outside the box. We've had to do it a lot this year um, of what we could do to even just get um, our, our residents to volunteer because we're getting, our events are getting big and I'm running out of family members and friends to <laughs> have them work these events. So if we could possibly, you know, not, not even just if Parks and Rec signs up to volunteer and help, maybe they get something, but possibly something to entice our residents to join in as well. Okay, thank you. Open the floor. Okay, we're going to need a motion to go into closed session at 817. There's a motion to go into closed session at 818. Um, for attorney-client privilege legal update regarding village hall litigation. Further business when you come back into session? Uh, call from the table. No. no call. Okay, then the videotaping of this meeting will cease at the end of your leaving the table. Okay. I'll, I will um, stop the live feed on Facebook and the recording on Zoom. Okay.